Seriously, you guys have to try pre-made frozen Chinese soup packs in bulk at home. It's super easy and you get economies of scale. You can use fresh ingredients, any recipe you'd like, and the time and effort saved is astronomical. Hi, I'm Lisa for the Chinese Soup Lady. Com. My daughter felt like having soup this morning. She loves drinking soup, but I didn't really have any fresh ingredients in the fridge today. I did have a lot of frozen soup packs in my freezer, which I used and had a soup ready for lunch. It was as easy as reaching into my freezer, taking out my rice cooker, dropping in the frozen fresh ingredients, adding a few more herbs based on weather and condition, topping up with water to the max water line, closing the lid and pressing cook. After 30 minutes, I could smell the fragrant scent of the soup waffling through my house. And after 60 minutes, depending on how long your rice cooker cooks for, you'll have an amazing ready to serve Chinese soup that can actually stay warm all day long. My soup packs are designed for a family of four and serve about four medium sized bowls. This fits perfectly into a one liter rice cooker. So adjust accordingly, depending on the size of your pot, rice cooker or family. These soup packs by design are already pre-washed, pre-blanched and pre-cut to bite-sized portions. Here's what you'll need to get started on this amazing soup journey that saves you both time and effort. You'll need a vacuum sealer. They are quite affordable these days and you can find them on Amazon and Timu. I've added links to the ones I've tried in the description below. Any vacuum sealer that can draw out the air and seal is sufficient for this purpose. Since I'm using mostly dried ingredients, any type of vacuum sealer will do. Most vacuum sealers have an outlet like this, where the air can get sucked out of a sealed cavity like this. This seal is usually made up of a spongy material and is what contains your bag opening. This is where you'll be inserting the top of your bag. Most of these vacuum sealers have side locks so that you can be hands-free as it does its work and are usually just one touch buttons that can vacuum and seal. You'll also need sealable bags. There are two types that I've tried. The first ones are pre-cut and pre-sealed on one side. These ones are actually better because I trust their sealing more than my own sealing. And they come in all sizes and you can cut them if they're too big. The second ones come in a roll like this and basically have both ends open so that you can actually cut to the length that you need. What you'll have to do though is cut it, seal one side before you put the ingredients in. I find these ones are thinner and does take a bit of practice to get that first seal right and I was finding that there was a lot more air leakage with these ones than the other ones. Finally, you'll need soup ingredients. Soups with no meats tend to be easier and quicker to make because I don't have to pre-blanch or pre-fry. And they tend to be in smaller packs like this. For soups with meats, I will blanch or fry as needed, ensuring that the meat's all prepped so that I can literally just drop in the soup pack and cook. This includes washing, cutting, blanching, or frying depending on the protein. I will also do this with other ingredients such as dried shrimp, dried scallops, or peanuts, just to give it more flavor. I've got a few soup pack examples on the blog as reference. You can use any of these as a soup base idea and build on it. Ingredients that are best for frozen soup packs include root vegetables, such as lotus roots, potatoes, carrots, any starchy vegetables like radishes and yams. This is because they hold their water content and freeze really well. With tomatoes, I'll usually add fresh after I put in the frozen soup packs. Use small cuts of meat like pork ribs or chicken thigh. These are much easier to put into your soup packs than a whole chicken carcass. They also stack really nicely in the bag and then on top of each other in your freezer. And finally, depending on what's in your Chinese soup pantry, I sometimes do drop in my herbs directly into the soup. But if I'm making for friends, I will drop everything in, including the herbs, so that it's complete and they still hold and freeze very well. Great additions that freeze really well are nuts, like peanuts, walnuts, cashews, or chestnuts. 
and your standard soup ingredients like dried long ons, dried red dates, dried fox nuts, dried Chinese yam, barley, or donggui. I find though that most Chinese herbs freeze pretty well. So here's how I do it. First, decide what soup you want to make. I have a lot of suggestions in the blog post that can give you some ideas. And I've tried to be exact with portions and how many people they serve, but sometimes it's still a guesstimate. Second, source your ingredients. And I usually try to get them fresh, like the day before, that I know I'm going to be making in bulk. Third, on the day of prep, I will be sure that I'm allocating enough time to do the whole soup preparation. For meatless soups, it tends to be about two hours for six packs. And for soups that have meats, it's about three hours for six packs. Four, I will start with protein prep first. If you're using any meats, you'll want to wash, cut, blanch, or pan fry. Be sure to drain as much of the blanching liquid as possible. Because if you don't, it may squeeze out into the vacuum sealer and that's really difficult to clean, especially if any gets onto the heating element that does the sealing. And then it just gets so messy. Trust me, I've tried. The fifth is then to prepare everything else that's not the protein, either your vegetables or fruit. This includes the washing, the peeling, and the cutting into bite-sized portions. Next, I'll then portion out my Chinese herbs that I'm using for the packs. And if there's preparation needed, like pan frying dried shrimp, I'll do that as well. When everything is prepared, I'll then lay it out like a buffet. I will usually pack meats at the bottom first, trying to stack them like Legos, and then drop in herbs around wherever I can squeeze them in. And then everything else on top. Although honestly, there's no real difference when it comes to taste when you boil your soup. I prefer to pack one soup at a time just so that I'm controlling what's going in it and I'm sealing one at a time. But you can do like a factory style and just dish out and portion everything at the same time. Be sure to leave at least two to three inches at the top of your soup pack where they have contact. This means that when the edges actually touch, ensure that there's enough space still on top for your seal. Then what you want to do is place the top edge of your soup pack into your vacuum sealer, ensuring that you don't cover the air hole that vacuums out the air and that the edge is actually more or less centered in the middle of this ring vacuum where everything's held tight. Then press your button and the vacuum sealer should do the rest of the work of both vacuuming and sealing. Sometimes it takes a bit of wiggling around, especially after the seal's been made, to remove the melted plastic from the heating element. You'll know it's working when the soup pack begins to shrivel up. If the pack doesn't shrink right away, I'll press the button again just to stop it and readjust the edge so that the position is able to access the vacuumer. This does take a few practice rounds to get right, so just be patient and try again. And finally, make space in your freezer for these newly created soup packs. I like stacking them in my freezer so that it saves space and I can easily see what soups I've made. And you're ready to go. Here are a few tips to help you along the way. As a newbie, I'll actually leave more than two inches just in case. That way, if you get it wrong, you can always cut the seal and try again without repacking the whole soup. Drain as much of the liquid as you possibly can. Put on any stickers or adhesives before you seal the bag. It's literally impossible to do it after. Really try packing strategically, trying to save space in the bag. This just makes it smaller and stackable. It makes storage so much easier. I'll use a permanent marker to write down the date of production in a small corner. These soup packs keep really nicely up to about three months in your freezer. And it's always nice to know when I made them because I make them all the time and I have so many. Feel free to add any additional fresh ingredients into your soup after you've dropped it in. And maybe a few choice herbs for additional flavor. I would love to hear any suggestions or how this is going for you. And of course, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below and I will definitely answer you and share this out with the community because other people might also be asking. I've got all the equipment links in the description below and on the blog for reference. Have fun making your soup packs. Happy soup making and see you next time.